So I went through menopause from hell. I put on a lot of weight, about five kilos. I had night sweats. I wasn't able to sleep at night. Previously, I used to sleep like a baby. Suddenly, it all went away. I got insomnia. I had joint pains. You name it, and it happened to me. I wrote an article on menopause. We put a link in captions. Do look at it. I did lots of different things. I did homeopathy. I've had cupping. I've had acupuncture. I've just tried to increase, improve my whole lifestyle. I'm exercising more than I've ever done in my life. All these things have come together. And I think I'm finally coming out the other end, feeling a lot stronger and a lot healthier. Probably stronger than I was pre-menopause. Welcome to Wellness Curated. This is your host, Anshu Bahanda. And as you know, in this series, we're getting you the best of Wellness Curated. Today's topic is something that every single woman goes through, menopause. But before I carry on, can I please request you to subscribe to our channel and to follow our podcast? If you do so, we can get you better and better speakers and keep providing you the service for free. So back to menopause. Now, menopause is something which you hear a lot of whispers about. I think we need to start this conversation all over the world. Menopause is a natural shift in a woman's life. It's not a condition. It's not a disease. It's not an ailment. And the run-up to menopause is called perimenopause. We did a podcast with Dr. Isabel Bond, who is an endocrinologist based in the UK. Here is a summary of what she says. The term menopause is a time when a woman, after one year, never, never had or experienced a period. And that corresponds, mm -hmm. uh, biologically speaking, to the rise of the FSH, you know, the follicular-stimulating hormone coming mm -hmm. from the hypophase, and it's going to rise and achieve a plateau. When that FSH is at a plateau, okay. that's what we call the menopause. We have talked about menopause in many, many episodes. Today, we're going to discuss the science behind menopause and how it affects women. And here is a clip for you from one of our episodes. So now tell me, what happens to women emotionally? Yeah. You were talking about how it affects their brain. Women have... Uh, receptors to estrogen to nearly every part of their body. But specifically in the brain, we have receptors to estrogen in the okay. hypophysis, hypothalamus, amygdala, and hippocampus. Mm -hmm. Place in the brain that uh, has a big impact on emotion. And they're also the place where you have the dopamine, okay. the serotonin, the GABA secretion. When they diminish, okay. they're going to have less of an impact on these cells, on the neurons, and these neurons are going to be less produced. So the serotonin is related to okay. happiness. So we're going to have a diminution in a serotonin. So women are going to feel more depressed. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other okay. neurotransmitter okay. which is affected is the dopamine. So the dopamine is uh, the decision-making mm -hmm. neurotransmitter. It's a working memory. Interesting. The other mm -hmm. uh, neurotransmitter which is affected a, a little bit more specifically uh, from the progesterone is GABA. If you have a diminution of GABA, the woman is going to start okay. to have anxiety, uh, you know, palpitation and, and feel really unwell. And what about night sweats and sleeplessness? So the night sweat are part of the FSH rising progressively to a plateau. I'm not sure we understand what is the system or the connection. Okay. Lack of sleep or the difficulty sleeping okay. is due to the diminution of the progesterone. So as it diminishes, for sure, mm. the, the sleep is going to be not as good. And you have the GABA diminishing. Okay. Waking up about 3, 4 o'clock in the morning with anxiety, not sleeping, not able to return to sleep. That's all you know, related to the progesterone, gently diminishing. Dr. Isabel, also talk, talk to me about sexual desire in women when they're going through menopause and after. The hormones, the secretion of the estrogen are diminishing. As I mentioned earlier, it's create a dryness. So that is drying 
because uh, the steroid, the estrogen and the progesterone, are giving like uh, a bed of uh, nutrition uh, for uh, this biofilm to be very uh, healthy and moist. So the vagine is going to okay. start to dry and diminish also anatomically. So intercourse is going to mm -hmm. become painful uh, or sometimes not possible. So the decline in estrogen levels doesn't just affect our reproductive system. It affects our brain as well. You know, when you hear about people saying, I'm going through brain fog, that's actually a thing. Estrogen is like a superhero in our bodies. It regulates body temperature, it regulates mood swings, and also cognitive functions. So as estrogen levels go down, many w women experience things like memory lapse, difficulty concentrating, mood swings, etc. What can you actually do about it? Here is what the UK and US-based osteopath Catherine Seckles had to say about it. So let's start with something that uh, Professor Andrew Huberman speaks about. He's another neuroscientist at Stanford. And I like the way that he presented this. And this is a technique that will immediately take down the intensity of the stress response. And it's called the physiological sigh. It's a breathing technique, right? And the breathing here is that exhalation phase is longer than inhalation phase, okay? So some people term it rather than the physiological sigh, they call it exhalation dominant breathing. Mm -hmm. So we'll go through it now. So I'm going to show you and then we can practice really easy. Ready? Yeah. So what I want to just point out here is it's not two breaths. It's sort of one long breath and then just a little extra breath and then really long exhale. It's not just about forgetting your keys. Your body is actually going on a hormonal roller coaster. There's a lot that ha is happening in your life. You're saying goodbye to certain roles which have been very important to you. Life's taking you through some huge changes. You could be stressing about getting older. You could be stressing about those lines in your face. You could be stressing about not being young and mobile anymore. You could be tossing and turning in bed. The physical symptoms of menopause, the night sweats can be debilitating. The hot flushes can be embarrassing sometimes when you're in public. But having said all that, our brain is very adaptable. So what would we recommend that you do? Eat the right food, do the right kind of exercise, possibly with strength training to combat osteoporosis and less muscle mass. Take supplements under the guidance of some sort of a medical professional, eating food that's rich in vitamin D and in calcium. And then there is dealing with mindfulness and meditation and relaxation techniques, which will help you sleep better at night and it'll help your mood swings. We can approach menopause from a sensible point of view. Tell me, Katrine, do you have any other advice for the people listening into this chat? Yes, take time out for yourself. You know, menopause is a transition from a fertile time to time to turn inwards for your needs. Looking at what your body, your mind, your soul needs, where you're at. So number one, take time for yourself. Whether it's on the mm -hmm. bus, focusing on yourself instead of reading 20 million things. Take the time to get a treatment to allow your body to relax, to hold up, to let go of those held up emotions and give yourself some time to practice. Things take time to practice, right? Even if it's twice a day for 30 seconds that you practice some of the techniques or maybe a time you feel stressed, just choose one time during the day and it'll become a routine. And that's what Joe Dispenza said, that you need to practice things and rewire your brain so that it becomes a habit. Your body is going through a major transformation. You could potentially put on weight. Any, any advice in menopause 
especially with weight gain absolutely menopause is something that i actually the ideal thing would be to come to me when you're uh, it's it's before menopause that's called perimenopause or even yes. before so then we yes. i will give you diet and lifestyle according to the 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 right guidance for example i tell you to have flax seeds flax seeds mm -hmm. are full of uh, phytoestrogens phytoestrogens yes. are plant based estrogens mm -hmm. which take the place of the estrogen so the menopausal symptom comes because there's no estrogen In so the if you have plant based estrogen they give they they take the place and then you know you don't face so, so many symptoms mm. some people explore hrt which is hormone replacement therapy please do this in a personalized way with a physician menopause is a hormonal change and the hormonal mm -hmm. change is not an illness and it is not a sign of a Uh, character weakness. If right. some women are suffering from more problems and symptoms than other women, it's not a sign for vitality. If you experience no symptoms, it's just a it's little just bit life. of life, life and it. luck. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. So uh, the the hormonal change is uh, affecting your metabolism. It is affecting. Your hormones, of course, it's affecting your libido, your stress resistance. It is affecting your ability uh, to to perform and your uh, ability to also rest. If a change is causing immediately a stress reaction inside of you, please start to read a little bit, inform yourself about the hormonal change, yeah. to relax a little bit. Yeah, because again, a hormonal change is not a disease. Secondly, if the symptoms are pushing you that far and that much out of your state of well-being, then please contact your physician, do a proper examination, do also a testing of your hormones. In my experience, best possible would be if you test your hormones at around day 23, 24 of your menstrual cycle. After this examination, you can discuss either herbal Mm -hmm. Or also, you can discuss uh, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. The classic hormone replace therapy with synthetic hormones, normally not uh, supporting, because a hormone is something that is an effect on the body, but not only stimulating, but also calming effect. You need the hormone to have a negative feedback on the body at the same time, not only stimulation. Because with just stimulation, you suddenly experience then the negative side effects of a hormonal treatment. The bioidentical hormones, for example, are also hormones or hormonal-like uh, phytotherapeutics, that means herbal remedies, they are not only stimulating but also calming at the same time. So that uh, uh, the chance that you experience a negative side effect of a hormonal therapy are going almost down to zero. It is, of course, possible that you are not liking the way of how it is affecting you. This is why I would recommend the, really the consultation, the guidance therapist yes, to find yes. for you the right remedy. Now, let's talk about the power of community, the power of talking about it. A number of celebrities like Sharon Stone and Gillian Anderson and Angelina Jolie have come and talked about it. Menopause is not an end. It is a beginning. Dr. Kristen Hawkes, who's an anthropologist, has done a TED talk about it. And she's come up with a groundbreaking concept. She calls it the grandmother hypothesis. And she talks about how, once you've gone through menopause, you could actually support the entire community through your time-tested wisdom. Menopause should not just be looked at through a lens of loss. It should be looked at a beginning. It's something that every human being has to go through. So let's look at menopause as something powerful and positive. Let's break the silence and share our stories, not just hide away and suffer alone. I hope you enjoyed this. Until next time, stay empowered.